This channel is part of the History Hit Network. I am Themistocles, general of the Athenians. My story begins 10 years ago. King Darius the Great rules the Persian Empire. Incredibly powerful, he puts down the Greek rebels of Asia Minor and threatens us next. Athenians, free Greeks who went to their aid. Our resistance is organized by Miltiades, the great stratego, and my role model. Few cities help us. Practically alone, Athens stands up to the Persian invader and leads the Greeks to a victory on the plain of Marathon. A victory that brings glory and prestige to Athens. زمین های من را بپیمایید از خوبران، تباختران را بگردید و همه در ایران را گرد آورید آن کدر اشکر بسیج کنید که نتوان آنها را شمارد از با آزوقه فراوان فراهم کنید و آن کدر کشتی محیع کنید که روی دریا را بپوشنند For Darius, the defeat at Marathon has left a bitter taste in his mouth, even though it doesn't have any real consequences on his empire or on his standing. To everyone, he seems invincible. I want Yes, I envied Miltiades' glory. He was the true hero at Marathon. He found a way to defend our city from the Persian invader and lead us to victory. But what good is honor to him now? Athens may mourn Miltiades and believe itself free from all danger, but I already know that is not the case. I only have to look out to sea to realize that.
The shores of Athens and the Aegean Sea should be peaceful after the Persian retreat. But in reality, it is the theater of clashes between rival cities. History Hit is like Netflix, just for history fans. With exclusive history documentaries covering some of the most famous people and events in history, just for you. From uncovering ancient Neolithic cultures to the dawn of the space race. History Hit has hundreds of exclusive documentaries with unrivaled access to the world's best historians. We're committed to bringing history fans award-winning documentaries and podcasts that you cannot find anywhere else. Sign up now for a 14-day free trial and Timeline fans get 50% off their first three months. Just be sure to use the code TIMELINE at checkout. Pirates from the Greek island city of Aegina regularly attack the modest trading fleet of Athens. Hardened fighters, the Aeginians are far superior seafarers than the Athenians. We must remember that at this time Greece isn't a unified country. It's a series of separate city-states which are often at odds with each other. Old squabbles between cities, briefly put aside for the Battle of Marathon, flare up again. So there's no single authority on the seas. Athens, by tradition, has no great navy, no great naval skill. Instead, Athenian ships and harbors are attacked by brilliant sailors from the neighboring island of Aegina. Aegina, not Athens, rules the waves of the Aegean Sea. Very few Athenians can imagine that their city will soon be targeted by a far greater navy than little Aegina could ever afford, the navy of the vast Persian Empire. But there is one man who does see the danger. Oh, Themistocles! Neon stolon artesulo noi catapcis toi eginator. Exausadon lusodes ke gonasi! Alutos exeoson an chronon menautikon kectomethamunen epitideonon. Neupi gestai teimioteron. Uc i canai ai prosadoi. Και τις πολίτες ξύρινας κάθε μισθό σας θα ήθελε σε Ιρ'αν. Τα διήδια εννοεί θέλουν. Και σου λιπάρεις. Εμπόλου νέων έδος τότε. Elasantes metalon auto stereoteron kai energoteron paraxomen. Alethos poremiosemin. Uk oyaikinetai. Aloi persai. Palinia sin pezu. Tas anarithmetus naus en marathon yedon. Ais e foberas tratiai umaros kinetai. Proemas em barus, e fugus, oste. Toi basile itan nun uc, arkese. E andem balosino i persai. Catatharasan i candese. Darius the Great dies after 36 years on the throne without seeing through his punitive campaign against Greece, which has been delayed due to troubles in Egypt.
His son, designated by Darius while he was alive, inherits a great civilization with a thousand-year-old history. Man, شاهنشاه نگران به نظر می رسند باید کلی را که پدرم و کس کرده به سرانجام برسانم مصریان مرا از این وظیفه منحرف کرده اند داریوشا می خواست آتن را تنبیخ کند و فرمان روایی را گسترش دهند من این کار را به جای و انجام ها هم دادم اما به شیوه خودم To begin with, Xerxes must defeat the Egyptians and make an example of them. Egypt is a major stake for the empire, as much for its wealth as for its strategic geographical location. This first military campaign is a chance for Xerxes to show his mettle and prove himself worthy of the title King of Kings. Mardunye, sepah raam odekan, esuye sabahel nil harakat mikonim, shuresh ro sar kub hahim kard. نعبت آتن هم می رسد اطاعت سر برم I'm seeking to perfect the rostrum, the fearsome ram of our triremes. By covering it in bronze plating, I will make it more effective during naval warfare. Suddenly, the discovery of a silver seam at the mines of Laurium, on the outskirts of Athens, brings new wealth to the city. The seam is exceptionally rich, and the profits, as is the custom, are shared out among the citizens. And the Athenians are delighted with this unexpected prosperity. Meanwhile, Xerxes is leading his campaign in Egypt with determination. Once the revolt is crushed, he plans to impose even harder servitude than during the reign of Darius. The stakes are high. If he can pacify Egypt, he will learn his spurs as a warrior king and merit his place in the continuity of the dynasty. Mardunye, Barhiz, Sarvaram, Faroni Yagira Adab Kardi. مصریان تشتیم شدن Xerxes wins fame where his father failed The new king is capable of military feats and worthy of carrying out the mission to expand the empire given to every king of kings by their god Ahura Mazda شاه بزرگ اجازه می فرمایید 
فرمان استراحت بدهم لشکریان دیگر رمق ندارند آره سربازان سزوارشان خداششان بده و قضایشان رو دا برابر کن Mardonius tell Xerxes You have punished the insolence of the Egyptians Do not let the insults of the Athenians go unpunished If you march with all your forces on Athens You will earn such renown that no one will dare defy you راهنمای من ایزدی است که ما را به پیروزی میرساند ما می توانیم بیش از پیش نمبر دو شویم کشور توزیع را بعد کنیم و گستاهان را مجازات کنیم برویم بکین هاهی از آتن A year later back in Persepolis Xerxes begins working on a plan for invasion from Asia Minor and into Europe to seize Athens and other Greek cities. As Hellespont ke bogzarim, kafi ist ke as samt shomal bar sar dushmanan furudai. Mardonius aims to subjugate the Greek cities of Thrace, Macedonia and Thessaly before attaining Athens in the heart of Attica and finishing by the Peloponnese. مردونیه دو مشکل داریم گذراندن نیروی زمینی از هلسپان گذر این افغان از کنار کل یاتوس با وجود توفنهای شدید آنجا با قدرتی که احورام از دو ممن داده میتوانم به هر چهار آن سوار چیره شوم ما بایست روی دریا راه برویم و روی زمین کشتی برونیم سرورم من میتوانم در باریکه ای که جزیره آتوس را به کالسیدیک متصل می کند برای شما آبراهی باز کنم الاسپان چطور؟ به پلی نیاز داریم آنقدر محکم که تمام لشکریان من با هزاران هزار سرباز بتوانند از آن بگذرند Let's battle your bastard! In the port of Piraeus in Athens, we count the wounded and lament the loss of entire loads of goods. <laughs> On the sea, without a maritime force, we're in no shape to defend ourselves. Here, tempers rise at the very name, Aegeans. Repeated clashes are driving my fellow citizens to detest their Greek neighbors, to forget the Persians and focus their hate on those who torment us daily. I cannot blame them, but I fear that wars between cities are weakening all Greeks in face of a Persian invasion. Meanwhile, Xerxes has begun his preparations, which are on an unprecedented scale. He orders the mobilization of countless troops, plans his route and orders gigantic works, like excavating a shipping channel across Mount Athos. He puts provisions in place in Thrace and Macedonia, orders the building of a bridge so his troops can cross the Hellespont, the Dardanelles Strait. Greek writers portray Xerxes as a mad megalomaniac, swollen with pride and in contempt of the limits imposed on men by the gods. In reality, his aim is clear, to punish Athens and subjugate all Greece. His plan is detailed, coherent and far from being extravagant. At the Ecclesia, it's a special day. Today, the profits from the silver mines at Lorium are being shared out. For many, this unexpected income is a chance to improve daily life and plan for the future. Caritas Atenae, Caitois Teois, Apodome, Tu Ermaiu, Tu Enalpistu. Kenai, Megan Neon, Drusai, Paulo Beo Lego. Hyperton, Kenes, Uergesion. Alla peride kadrakmon katapoliten, perimis tu henamena. Watenayoi! Akusa timu! Dikayon! Tas ekton argurion metalonimin, foi tu sas prosodus, 
that's a bone test, Jele. Ice, Amenon and Chrysimetha. Apodex and Abule. Ice, Frieres, Paraski was then a pitoy pros, I guinetas polymoi, Dynametha. Dacrimata proelometha. Utoi. He must uk eosif again, o son peno men! Ti probares. Toi skerdesi? Prosto te ipole simferon, grohometha! Upertona fenon, na upegestai, dynametha jagosias trieres! Epito ai gaion pelagos, ta proteia te ipole dantes! The art of oratory is a source of all influence. I used the Aegeans as a pretext to finally build the maritime force we severely lack. Of course, I am really concerned with the Persian threat, but I failed to mention that. Amid the hubbub of the shipbuilding, I am delighted to be building this war fleet. Each trireme will hold 200 men, and I'm planning to build 100 triremes a year. The poorest citizens already thank me for this shipyard, which offers them unheard for work. This fleet will be our biggest asset, and for three reasons. It will defend our coasts from attacks by sea, it will protect our merchant ship convoys and our communications. But primarily, it will be our offensive against our enemies. Athens will rule the waves. In Greece, it's only Athens which is launching a huge program of building warships. Meanwhile, Xerxes assembles a huge land army in Asia Minor, whose troops come from the 50 peoples of the empire. He also put together an impressive fleet, manned by Egyptians, Phoenicians, and also Greeks from Asia Minor. As for the Mount Athos channel, work is progressing despite difficulties. To avoid the caving in of the walls, the Phoenicians have the idea of excavating in a V, despite doubling the size of the task. Thousands of laborers work in ships for three years. When finished, the channel measures two kilometers long by 30 meters wide and 50 meters deep. Greeks understand that engineering, recruitment of troops on this scale means only one thing. Xerxes is utterly determined, and Greece is his target. I have done everything to ensure that all Greeks are aware of the considerable preparations of Xerxes on land and sea. For the first time, 31 Greek cities must unite to debate on how to act. The most important, Sparta, Corinth and Aegina are all present. I am ready to speak on behalf of Athens. Tresan prostenikautin stratian, magestai tolmisi. E antis elenu per tes patridos calista fronei, tes eleutherias geusamenos, kai dulean arnumenos. Hoi montoi gen, kai dordontes, miden dinon paskin okusin. Poleton elinidon poleon ta barbaru proinondo. I barbaroi despotei pei testai telusai malon elenis strategoi ta utas apolisian otioi. Ronte endulian dehestrai. Antis tenai demonon dinametha e anspendometha taneke katas pesantes. Sumachian poieteon. Homologusin oi ai ginetai tus helena sapantas alelois Dialatestai. Non hypertesco in es eleutherias magesometha. Quand a passant on y metteron dynamie on y gemonien, to is la que demoni se petrepsen simbuleo. Ya ten aretin, kaita pe pragmen en doxois osi. To i leonidai, katagen, 
אותי והורה בידי, כתתלתן. אל תנאי אוסי פרסטי נס, הודת מיסטוקרס, ולא יפרינה אותי כס, הם פלוט אטוס. אין מן מרתוני תוס פרסס, אין איכס אמן. ימין דה פלסטי נס איסי. הומוס, הומונו יסחרין. Toi stu ju synedriu dog masi pethometha. Yes, I have yielded command to the Spartans. But who was it who convinced the cities to unite against the Persian invader? Isn't that more important? Rather than linger on dark thoughts, I prefer to assess the Persian forces. سرورم اگر قدم رنجه بفرمایند شاهنشاه ها میخواستید سربازان ما روی دریا راه بروند و روی خشکی کشتی برانند آنچه فرمونده بودید گردم After four long years of work, Xerxes' massive invasion plan is coming to fruition. The contingents must cross the Hellespont and join up with the fleet. Xerxes ordered the building of this pontoon bridge from Asia to Europe. Mardonius has linked the two shores of the Dardanelles by joining together 674 triremes. This bridge covers the full width of the strait, one and a half kilometers. The ships, anchored and bound with linen rope and bark, are covered with planks, then with leveled earth. Wooden barriers prevent the animals from being scared by the waves. Herodotus assesses Xerxes' army at five million men and notes that the crossing took seven days and seven nights. This is surely an exaggeration. The Persian army must have numbered one to two million men, Persians advance, supported by the fleet, which follows the coastline. So, hey, Bozor, in se jasu se yunani radat gir kardein. Alabana check on him. Sarvaram, in mardan se zavar e mergand. Beheshan ab bedahi. چه کسی شما را فرستاده؟ سرورم دمیستوکل هست سردار بزرگ هاتنیان کی؟ نمیشه نسمش پس می آهد نیروی ما را بسنجد خب باشد همه ی مردانم را نشانشان دهید نگذارید از پیوده و سواره از کماندار و نفگام چیزی از چشمشان دور بیافتد شاهنشاه چرا نیروهای خود را بر دشمن آشکار کنی؟ جان این سی مرد چه کار من می آید؟ حالا که اگر به هاست هاد قدرت من را به یونانیان فرش کنیم به شک حراسان می شوند و دیگر نیازی به کار زنه خواهد بود یا حادشان تسلیم می شوند یا می گریزند اینجا زرکسیز ویل پروکر انپرسیدنتی فیر اگر این آرمی از این لجستیکل نایتمیر را مرد 
it nonetheless captured Thrace and Macedonia with ease. Xerxes is now ready to descend on central Greece without cause for concern. The feedback from spies throws the Greeks into confusion. For Sparta and her neighbors in the south, the preferred defensive line is the Isthmus of Corinth, the narrow gateway to southern Greece. But to protect Athens and central Greece, two advanced positions are to be guarded, the narrow pass of Thermopylae and the sea right next to it, a narrow channel between Thermopylae and Cape Artemision. In the late summer of 480, Leonidas, one of Sparta's two kings, heads there with 300 elite Spartan citizens and about 7,000 hoplites from other states. Eurybiates, the Spartan general, leaves for Artemisium with Themistocles and the entire Greek fleet. What happens at Thermopylae soon becomes legendary. Persians cross the mountains to encircle Leonidas' position. He sends away his allies to save them and himself dies fighting with his 300 Spartans. The Spartans, always brilliant at propaganda, turn this into a moral victory. They have proved they're the bravest of warriors who will always lead their allies from the front. Sparta's leadership of the Greeks wasn't undermined by this defeat. It was cemented. The fleet fights well, but withdraws after the fall of Thermopylae. Xerxes invades Phocis, Boeotia, and besieges the cities he crosses, whose only choice is surrender or be destroyed. The Persians are at the gates of Attica. The Athenians need to turn to the gods. Alarmed by our future, we question the gods through the oracle of Apollo, as is the custom. But how should we greet the divine announcement of great misfortune to come? With docility? Adunaton fugen, me uper eleutherias maches amenus. Utus prius sosantes tu loigenes someda. Es vale san pos. De uteron res monegen. Anankayon. Frustrated, I convince my fellow citizens to pan an extra tax to obtain another consultation with the Oracle. Once the enemy has seized all that encloses the country, Jupiter the Omniscient will grant Athena a wall of wood which will be neither taken nor destroyed. It will be your salvation, that of you and your children. <laughs> Do not quietly await the large army which will come to attack you by land. Rather, take flight. A day will come when you will stand up to it. For you, O oh divine Salamis. Themistocles interprets the prediction in his own way and explains it to the Athenians. The oracle evoked their enemy's downfall, not their own. If they must evacuate the city and protect their army, it's so as to fight better later, on the sea at Salamis, an island close to Athens. If the outcome were disaster, the oracle would have said ill-fated Salamis and not divine Salamis. My family, like those of all Athenians, packs our belongings. 
My loved ones' hearts are heavy with the idea of leaving our ancestral land. For the first time in our history, we Athenians must evacuate our city. I bid farewell to that which is most precious. My father may have disowned me in the past, but that will not stop me honoring his grave. Would he understand that Athens, without walls, will fall to the massed Persian ranks marching on her? We have no other choice, flee or perish. I organize the evacuation of the city and use our fleet. It's aboard our triremes that the Athenians will go into exile and remain safe. May no one scorn our fleet. If we flee, it is to better attack later. <laughs> The height of the flames disguises nothing of the violence ordered by Xerxes. The Persians set about destroying Athens, surely furious at finding the city deserted. I refuse to be shaken by it. Our temples may have been disfigured, but we're all safe and free. May the Persians fear the effects of our wrath when the time comes for our revenge. Xerxes is prepared to pursue the Greeks to their refuge, the island of Salamis. No subject kings dare oppose him. Everyone docilely agrees to a naval battle, all except one person, a woman. Artemisia I, queen of Halicarnassus, disagrees. She thinks it wrong to underestimate the Greeks at sea and that it's preferable to avoid naval conflict. She advises Xerxes to advance on land and capture the Peloponnese. Xerxes is unconvinced. He wants to pursue the Athenians and their allies and face them in a naval battle. It's not the usual plan. Until now, the campaign has advanced simply. You besiege a city, it surrenders, or is raised, then you go on to the next one. As Athens is in ruins, the king should sweep down on the Isthmus of Corinth to attack the cities of the Peloponnese and complete his conquest of Greece. But the Athenians are not subjugated, and the king doesn't want to leave an enemy fleet behind him. So the Persians sail their fleet to Salamis, but the Greeks are divided about what action to take. The Persians have defied us all day off the coast of Salamis. It was easy to convince the Greeks to refuse this unfavorable battle. But now, we must debate which battle to take to them. Athena in Epretesan. Now, 
Maron e min sumpere it's moi pantiste ne ma kestai. Ein prosten tes per ponisoi. E Antonis mon megaloi te ke apokreso men. Ein podiste santai oi persoi. E andi ti tometa aspalos pe uxomen eisten peloponisoi. Men diamino men enisoi catergemenoi prosane ke sta pate. Protestantes. E an epituismo majestai dianoethete. Totte salamina cae megaran, cae aiginen proieste. Epiplagiutas naus kinesantes. Un mas piesusi. E an apohoris domeza? Cate castentas poleis catabalusi. O tenistocles, en tois agosi, rapis de ta e antis pro exanas te. Nai, hoi da poleftente su Stefano tai. Patakson men, akus men toi. Tension mounts among the Greeks due to the Persian 1200 ship fleet. The alliance of the cities is threatened by the temptation of every man for himself. The Peloponnesians want to retreat to their lands. In Themistocles' mind, if they don't fight at sea, everyone will return to their cities, the army will disperse, the fleet will break up, and all Greece will be lost. Aneuneon, megale stratiaton person, uc ankinefe. Ude trofas dexaitos. Es aporian situ catastantes, palin anastrepsusim. The Greek fleet has 378 triremes, about 200 of which are Athenian. And Salamis Bay has the advantage of being a real bottleneck where numbers won't matter. So the chances of success are real if he can convince Eurybiades and the other generals. Pos apoliandri petestai cre. Oi patrisem be pretai. E patrisem talistina. Epitas diacosias naus uperelenon strateusas. Demonon nautikoi restai en toi de toi polemoi. E ande mignois? Imas catalepeen oioites me. Catagen to plethos auton, upote catagen du neseste. Oi ruibiare, episoi eso eteriate selados. Diamenas menen salamini, tu selenas soses. E de me, anatrepseis. Eurybiades must accept. If the Athenian fleet leaves, it will certainly condemn the rest of the Greek fleet to defeat. Kai doloi eise. Oi persai maquestai e piontes. Entas suaitis? Sohanjo, yek pei ke yunani e jaze ye jolus mi chokhad. Begu il vore chavad. Ay pat shahe bozorg, temistok sadar yunanian mara ferestade ke begu yam un kush be farman shamast. Temistok, tu az afrodi u hasti? Harf, Bezan, 
بین یونانی ها تفرقه افتاده و در فکر گریزند تمیستاکل به شما توصیه می کند که نگذارید آنها فرار کنند از غیبت یگان زمینیشان استفاده کنید تا به نیروی دریاییشان حجوم برده آنها را نابود کنید و دنیا را فرا بهانید Faced with the outsized Persian forces, it's not rare for kings or generals to go over to the enemy hoping for leniency. Xerxes, like his predecessors, knows how to be generous with those who serve him well. Sarvaram, amri dashtid. Mojiro ro az no begu. Could Themistocles, disheartened by his allies' lack of commitment to the Greek cause, betray his own? A surprising turn of events. Themistocles knows he must provoke a quick naval battle to save Greece. Eurybiades and the other generals agree to follow him, but they could change their minds. A battle out at sea is risky due to the numbers. That's why Themistocles must draw the enemy to where he wants them, Salamis Bay. Xerxes was already intent on engaging in a naval battle to finish off the Greeks. Themistocles' betrayal is too good a chance to turn down. Xerxes speeds up his plan. He wants to block as soon as possible the three exits from Salamis Bay so the Greeks are unable to escape. That night, the sea blockade is deployed with 200 ships to the northwest of the Megara Pass and to the southeast on either side of the island of Sitalia. His plan is to encircle the strait by surrounding the islands, then to massively attack the Greek fleet by a maneuvering on the flanks and destroy it. The Mystocles strategy at Salamis is to prevent the Persian fleet doing to the Greek ships what Xerxes' army has done to Leonidas at Thermopylae, using their superior numbers to surround the Greeks. So Greek ships are to block a narrow channel between the Isle of Salamis and the Athenian mainland. Persian ships seem to have been lighter and more maneuverable than the Greek ships. But in the channel of Salamis, they'll be too cramped to maneuver. Persian numerical superiority will become meaningless. There will now be a ratio of one to one. At the new day's dawning, I can only be proud of the long road traveled. Ten years of effort to establish a naval policy and build this fleet. It's now her chance to shine today in a moment of truth that will decide the subjugation of the freedom of the Greeks. The Persians are where I want them to be, but what will be the outcome of battle? That I cannot answer. Xerxes is based on the mainland, facing Salamis. From here, he can keep track of his fleet and the deployments for battle. Confident in his fleet, he can't wait for battle to begin. Shay pure hamle ro bezenid. Ahoro mazdo yovareton bard. Enemy against enemy, the two fleets engage. At the first push, the massed Persian navy remains unmovable. But soon, crammed into a tight space, numerous Persian ships start getting in each other's way, ramming into each other with their bronze rams. 
whole rows of oars are splintered. Painted with blood, the Battle of Salamis ends and plunges the Persians into the darkness of grief. Xerxes is denied victory at sea. His fleet is weakened by the lack of logistical support from his imposing land army. Xerxes leaves, never to have another opportunity to invade Greece. Salamis was not an ultimate defeat for Persia, but it did show the Greeks that the Persians were not invincible. The Persian Empire, far from being bled dry, would continue for another 200 years. Greece owed its salvation to the fleet of Themistocles, to the determination of a man who wanted his country to remain free at all costs.